Hello, this is Dr. Babo. Welcome to Dr. Babo's book talk. Today I'm going to actually talk about Farid Zakaria's book, a best-selling author of Post-American World. The new title is 10 Lessons for a Post-Pandemic World, which was published October 2020. So almost right after pandemic, while we're still going through this crisis, um, he wrote a book. He is a Muslim from India, uh, but man, uh, it's almost prophetic. So, Holy Spirit, God, come and touch us, fill us, uh, so that we may grasp the truth, that we may apply in the field of ministry and mission that we're engaged in. Help us, O oh God. Give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is a book I thought I'll just pick it up read in the airplane and I did uh, most of it uh, but the cover design is just fascinating you see how uh, they um, the, the front picture I, I thought those were dots and then uh, when you look at closely the cover design is basically people looks like dots wow very uh, interesting design kind of uh, show what he is about to write. This book was um, published, as I said, 2020. Um, and a little bit about the author. He is, some of you know him as a CNN GPS host of the program. But uh, he was a foreign student from I India to Yale, 1982. Wow, think about that. 1982 is a Muslim in Hindi world coming to America really struggled he said but not um, but anyways Yale and then he went to Harvard uh, got a PhD in political science and he writes uh, Washington Post column uh, and his article actually gets uh, translated into uh, Korean and published in Korean as well Korea Times. So I actually clip his article because I, I read his column and very brilliant scholar, brilliant man. Uh, he's a great analysis of what's going on. Um, he, this 10 lessons for post-pandemic world talks uh, about 10 things that will change. Uh, talks about bad effect, you know, how it came uh, uh, from a bad and I really uh, like the content, it's kind of lined up and the whole content itself tells a story. Lesson one, buckle up. It's going to, you're gonna have a rough uh, time as pandemic passes. And now a uh, recent post on CNN basically said it'll take several years before we can overcome pandemic because the virus is changing and touching more world. And, even vaccination because only the rich nations are being vaccinated you cannot do that because we're all connected um, billions and billions of people are traveling the world right now after post pandemic so buckle up it's going to get rough lesson two what matter is not the quantity of government but the quality right uh, wow so this is crazy how he is able to articulate uh, very succinctly, but talk about the critical issue. Um, when this book was published, uh, they still uh, were debating, I mean, um, about where, the, where is it from? And of course, now most people realize that it maybe jumped from a bat uh, from the, uh, the market in China, where they were eating bats and all kinds of exotic animals. Um, he's suggesting that COVID-19 pandemic is new, upturning many of our daily patterns and presumption, but this emergency has highlight, highlighted one of the oldest truths about international life, that ultimately countries are on their own, right? I mean, we will unite and try to do things together, but ultimately at the end, um, you're on your own. So buckle up, it's, it's, it's going to get rough, even in that matter. 
and also the whole thing about um, um, what matters is not lesson two is that it's not quantity but quality uh, of the government because in his writing in page 29 in October 2019, just a few months before the novel coronavirus swept the world, John Hopkins University released its first Global Health Security Index, a comprehensive analysis of countries that were best prepared to handle an epidemic or pandemic. The United States ranked first overall and first in four of the first category, six, first four of the six categories, prevention, early detection, reporting, a sufficient and robust health system and compliance with international norms. Can you believe that? <laughs> October 2019, uh, John Hopkins declared that America is number one in readiness of the pandemic. But by March 2020, this advantage seems like a cruel joke as COVID-19 tore across the United States as federal government mount delayed, weak, and erratic response. Hmm. When COVID-19 hit, America's medical emergency system crashed. Hmm. So what happened? What happened? Well, you know, talk about the budget, uh, how much money we're spending, how many hospitals we have, the quantity of government, quantity of programs, quantity of all that meant nothing when quality was lacking. And that's very important. It's about quality, right? And then he says, market are not enough, or in, in his writing, capitalism is, is not enough, right? Um, it's amazing how in America, for example, 43% of those surveyed in May 2019, Gallup poll agree, some form of socialism would be good for the country. Wow, compared that to 1942, only 25% did. So what happened, right? Well, the country that defined itself by its unapologetic advocacy of capitalism now appeared to be increasingly embracing an ideology that is, had fought against the most of 20th century. Well, the free market. Right? Because the textbook definition of socialism is government owned ownership of the means of production, factories, farms, and, and enterprises. But that's not what uh, uh, a lot of Americans won. As Bernie Sanders himself makes clear, his dream country is not Cuba, but Denmark. <laughs> a lot of socialists in Korea also, they, they don't want to be North Korean. They know how poor North Koreans are. They said, let's be Vietnam. Let's be Vietnam. Okay? I'm not saying that I'm subscribing to that. I'm simply saying that post-pandemic would have to face this issue because, as you know, that um, rich are getting all kinds of different treatment and, and the whole capitalistic, global capitalism has lost its fume in a sense. Um, check this out. The Nor at the start of the pandemic, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology made a Facebook post urging any of its students studying in abroad to return home, adding, especially if you are staying in a country with poorly developed health service and infrastructure and a collection infrastructure or collective infrastructure, for example, the USA. <laughs> they, they called all their students from USA because they realized that, wow, you know, um, that's what's lacking. Lesson four, people should listen to the expert and experts should listen to people. In March 2016, with Donald Trump poised to secure the Republican nomination, he was asked which foreign policy, policy expert, expert he is going to consult with. And then, quote, this is Trump saying, I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have very good brain, he said. My primary consultant is myself and I have a good instinct for this stuff. He later explained why he didn't rely on expert. The experts are terrible, he said. Look at the mess we're in with all these experts that we have. Wow. Wow, look at the mess that we're in. Donald Trump consistently undermined his own expert's guidance. For months on end, he refused to wear a mask publicly, signaling that in his view, face covering was for weak liberals.
That has a very huge implication on Christian community in America. Listen to the expert. Lesson five, life is digital. What does that mean? Well, everything is going to become digitized. And I mean, we know that we are going through information revolution, the 4.0 industrial revolution and all that. And the whole thing will shift. And they are talking about AI revolution. And, and, and in, honestly, the mission field and Christian community is so behind, especially mission field is so behind. Never mind AI revolution, it's not going to touch them for a long time. Just try to use Zoom, you know, and utilizing Zoom would be the huge task. And how to use digitize means to really share the gospel and equip and disciple the next generation. And I, I really think we need to really work with that. The lesson six, Aristotle was right. We are social animals. I love this section. As much as everything's digitized, everything will be become that, still, still, uh, we will need high touch, right? used to talk about high-touch, low-tech versus high-tech, low-touch. But we still need, it at highest level of tech revolution, we still need high level of touch. It's both and. It's not either or. Over and over again. You know, we constantly make mistakes because we think we need to choose one or the other. It's got to be high-touch. It's got to be high-tech. Because we're not going back. Post-COVID-19, especially in the health industry, uh, they are developing so many ways in which the human will not be involved touching the patients. So it just, it was already working, already set to take over. Now it's going to take over. So be ready for that. Because, and also lesson nine, uh, the world is becoming bipolar. Well, I'm skipping seven and eight, but... Um, well, okay, seven, number eight is globalization is not dead. Number nine is the world is becoming bipolar. What does that mean? Well, it's going to be China and USA. I want to read this. Over more than two centuries, the United States has strived a very wide range of feelings in the rest of the world, love and hatred, fear and hope, envy and contempt, awe and anger. The Irish commentator Finland O'Toole wrote in April 2020, but there is one emotion that has never been directed toward U.S. until now. Pity. Wow. <laughs> Pity. So in this bipolar world, um, we have to be aware and, and be sensitive on how we're going to actually adjust our life. Bipolarity without war. Tension between United States and China is inevitable. Conflict is not, right? Relationship between Washington and Beijing are far less tense in every aspect. Beijing's market Leninism does not truly represent a viable social alternative to the West. The China model is an unusual combination of liberal and mercantilist economy and repressive policies, politics and emanating from China's particular history. During Cold War, for example, during Cold War, U.S.-Soviet trade in goods, when it existed at all, rarely went above two billion a year. U.S.-China trade in goods is nearly two billion every single day. Think about that, right? When we talk about bipolarity, I mean, my goodness, every single day, the trade that goes between U.S. and China is two billion a day. Between U.S. and Soviet during Cold War it was two billion a year. So, we would live in this China-U.S. world. It has a lot of implication, doesn't it? A lot of implication, and you need to think through that your own mission effort, think through that your ministry, think through your own life. <laughs> Lesson ten: Sometimes the greatest realists are the idealists. COVID-19 is a global phenomenon that has paradoxically caused nation everywhere to turn inward. By April 2020, Donald Trump's strategy on pandemic had devolved into little more than an appeal to American nationalism, which the president blaming China for spreading the disease and attacking the World Health Organization as accomplice. accomplice. China, for its part, paid lip service to global cooperation while quickly embracing vaccine nationalism. 
Wow. Well, sometimes the great real, 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 realists are the idealists. Well, let me read something about multilateralism, you know, like G20. G20 is group of 20, is nations coming together for a common goal, okay? Um, the drive for multilateralism is not purely idealistic. The United States, Europe, Japan, South Korea, right, South Korea makes the list, and especially China have gained immeasurably from being part of an open, rules-based system, all of them, even Beijing, would have every incentive of upholding the system rather than bring the house down. So, great idea of uh, being an idealist is a realist in post-COVID-19. I mean, I would say that post-COVID-19 world would be, should be ruled by philosophers. That's my take. In conclusion, he writes, nothing is written. Nothing is written, right? It's brand new. It's going to uh, go anywhere. Uh, however, uh, we fashion, we develop, and we uh, strategize. Nothing is written. Right? Um, it is our to take that opportunity or squander it. Nothing is written. I, I just thought it was a really brilliant book. Um, I learned a lot and I'm, I'm trying to actually uh, write an essay, about eight to 10 pages essay on leadership in missions. So part of this book talk, or part of the reason why I read this book is because um, I need to write an article for uh, Asia Mission Advance. Asian Mission Advance is a um, scholarly publication, obviously, among Asian mission, missiologists. And their upcoming issue in April, uh, their theme, topic is leadership in missions, which is their theme. And I said, why are we talking about leadership in mission without the context of COVID-19? So I am right now gearing up to write an article uh, Leadership in Mission in Post-COVID-19. So this book really speaks a volume. And he really thought through and wrote uh, 10 aspects of that. And of course, I cannot talk all about it because it's only 12 pages article. And so I need to kind of pick and choose. And I really need to talk about, of course, life is digital because we are so far behind when it comes to development. I mean. It's interesting how two years ago I was at Yale Edinburgh conference and I actually present a paper and you know this their tradition at the end of the conference everybody have a banquet and then during the banquet they ask what do you want next year's agenda theme to be and I raised my hand I said can we talk about digitization uh, and the role of digitization in the mission field and they thought wow that's great and so actually it was chosen but now they're going to talk about oral tradition, written tradition, and you know the digital tradition or something like that. And there was going to be the theme of 20, 2020 of conference, but of course it was canceled due to COVID-19. So they're going to continue to do that. So I actually am going to write an article there as well. So, but this book already clearly talks about uh, we're, we're not going back. It's not even like new normal. It was normal already, but it's going to be ex ex uh, expanded even more. So I'll probably have to talk about how life is digital at the same time, how uh, Aristotle was right, we are social animals. In the tension of high touch, high tech mission and leadership has to really at least play a role, not to argue against the digitization like Zoom meetings and um, and because the, the next generation already take that as their reality and they are fine and they, they're going to work with that. And I think a lot of the older generation really have to come to terms with that and talk about globalization and talk about bipolar polarity and especially America. 
no longer plays that leadership role in the world. And then uh, Trump really made it clear. Uh, and everybody now knows uh, where America stand in terms of global leadership. And so we need to deal with that uh, in, in the mission field. How does it look like, you know, when uh, it's not one century, it's not bipolarity, it's not China and America, but we are looking at uh, polycentric. It will be many, 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 many centuries. And so him as an economist, as a political scientist, he's seeing that as a global setting. But from a mission field, it's going to be polycentric, many, many locations. Uh, Cambodia can become the center of Southeast Asia mission because why? Everything's digitized. We don't have to travel. We don't have to. And, and, and when it comes to talk about uh, not how many missionaries you send that matters, it's the quality now. Quality will dictate. And, th and then you're going to rule. You're going to be the leader. So leadership that focus on quality, understand digitization, understand the high touch, and un understand that it's going to be polycentric. It's going to be um, the rule of the game. And unlike his conclusion, it is not written. Well, I believe it is written already. Christians believe that everything is already written out, or just living out what is already determined and moving forward according to his will. His story. It's already written. We're living through that and finding his will and being participating in that. So I, 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 uh, I, I hope my uh, reading really helps my paper and then it could uh, capture. But nevertheless, I highly recommend this book. If you could, buy it, read it, be inspired uh, that even a secular leader uh, already seeing the future in, this, in death I think we definitely, definitely uh, also engage in the same manner. Amen. God bless you. See you at the next book talk.